I want to start by saying thank you for having me. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to uh, for, for for me to share in this uh, forum. Uh, this 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 would be my first time uh, sharing in uh, PyCon Python conference. Um, and I flew away from Indonesia. Hopefully, I can share something with you guys. So let's get started. So the the topic would be uh, AIoT. So this this one of uh, new term currently that being uh, popular. Uh, I will explain more about that. So how we can uh, get into AIoT with MicroPython. Uh, allow me to introduce myself. So my name is Andrew. Uh, I'm CEO of DigotX. I will uh, uh, talk about the company and also a, a deputy chairman for Indonesia IoT Association. So if you guys want to uh, expand your market, IoT market to Indonesia, uh, Indonesia IoT Association uh, would be the first uh, association that you should talk to. Right, because we know how, how the market works, uh, the market size, who's the players, and everything. Uh, I'm PCSIS, developers, uh, and entrepreneurs. Uh, I got for 20 years right now, uh, MPP, most playable professional for Azure. And uh, been doing electronics since 20 years ago. And yeah. Still, still trying to change the world to uh, entrepreneurs. Okay, uh, my company is called Dicot X. We we try to solve big problems with AI and IoT. Uh, these are just a few of uh, verticals that we currently doing: uh, asset tracking, uh, agriculture, uh, with smart. I will talk more about this products later, and so on. So, like, uh, oh. One more. Uh, we also develop uh, prototyping kits for enabling you to start get, getting into IoT. Um, and this board is actually uh, designed 100% by ourselves, and it can it, it can it, it's able to run MicroPython as well. Right. So get started. So I have uh, by now you already know about AI, right? And this photo is actually uh, from. Uh, a movie from by Steven Spielberg, um, and of course you already know what's the definition of AI, uh, machine learning, and also deep learning. And this just few uh, what we can do with AI, recommendation, classification, and so on. And these are some application um, how uh, we can put AI into practice. So we can use for computer vision, which is, for example, uh, image classification, objectification, and so on. So uh, if we simplify the architecture for uh, application that powered by AI and also backed by cloud, uh, this we can separate between edge and also cloud, right? Edge, which is something that near to the user or near to the uh, uh, the device which is deployed. Uh, whether, whether it's IoT, whether it's uh, user application, browser, and also the cloud itself, right? So I don't know whether you still remember this, 2015, how old that net? Uh, we can use a, uh, we can re we can open how old net through browser, and we can upload our photos and got the prediction of age and. Uh, and sex, right? Gender. And it's funny that uh, my wife is older than me, and she's, uh, she's complained about that, which is not true. So, but, but as you can see, that the system still learning that. At that time, uh, our photo actually goes through to the internet, to uh, to to the uh, Microsoft, Microsoft Cloud, which is based AVI, and we get the prediction, right? So that's how it works. But currently. Uh, they're already doing the inference on the on the browser itself. Okay. And let's let's do some demo. Uh, 
let's say I want to use microcontroller and a camera to do uh, uh, gender animation recognition. But for now, I, I use cloud-based, a cloud-powered uh, cloud uh, uh, recognition. So I have the photo, and the camera will take the photo and upload to the cloud. Uh, there's an API there. And then there's a, uh, what we call it, uh, uh, face AVI, which is this is, uh, one of my, uh, Microsoft Azure Cognitive Services. And we get the prediction, male, natural, uh, gender, and emotion. So this, for example, the, uh, the video that I recorded earlier. So we can see recognizing, meaning the photo has actually been taken and uploaded to the cloud. And I switch mode, being angry, which is quite hard. And switch to smile. <laughs> it's very hard though. <clears throat> OK, uh, there's a few things to notice here. First is that if you see the, this recognizing moment, right? There's a, there's, a, uh, there's a time needed for recognizing. This actually the photo being taken and uploaded to the cloud and get the prediction, uh, which is uh, JSON format. You can see on, on the background, there's a log messages. And another thing is that uh, if, you, if you're angry, you, you will look older, right? <laughs> If you don't notice, <laughs> my, my age first, and then uh, 31, and then when i angry, I got suddenly 40. OK? Right? OK. <clears throat> so that's uh, how we do uh, AI application powered by cloud, right? Now, let's talk about uh, Internet of Things. So what is Internet of Things, right? Is it a smart lamp or lamp that you can control through the mobile phone? Well, you can say that it's kind of IoT, right? But more in more formal definition, hmm, uh, you can say that IoT is a physical object that have uh, embedded electronics as uh, firmware, connectivity, and also people uh, still in the loop. Those will uh, enable uh, data exchange in order to get, uh, to create a smart and uh, application and, and services, right? So maybe it's easier to see in, in, the, in the picture. So you can see here, there's a things, a lot of them. And then things usually uh, connect through the cloud through a, a via a gateways because most of the things do communication through uh, radio. And then on, on the cloud, this is simplified, right? This is simplified architecture. You have ingestion or storage. You have, you know, uh, uh, analytics. You have uh, device management and visualization. And I want to talk a bit about one of our products, uh, which is Kettle Trackers. Uh, we call it Smart Ternak. Ternak meaning Kettle in Indonesia. So as you can see, there's, there's a device uh, you put around the kettle neck. And then those, uh, that device actually has a lot of sensors. Uh, those are the parameters that we record. You know, location, uh, behavior, uh, environmental parameters. And then you. You publish to the cloud, and then you can do monitoring, right? You know uh, the body temperature of the cattle, uh, how many steps being taken by, uh, by the cattle, uh, you know, ambient temperature, and so on. So, AI, uh, so IoT is all about that collecting, right? Uh, storing, visualization, and also control or, or, or reaction in massive scale. So, but after the, those data are collected, then you need to uh, start making sense of those, those data, right? Providing insights and recommendation. Those 
uh, that where, where, where AI can uh, come from. So uh, with our products, uh, of course, farmer, farmer is just regular people, right? They don't really care about raw data, temperature, humidity. They don't, don't really care about that. So what we should come up with, how we can uh, present the insight, the insight and also recommendation uh, through the performance and attention, right? So it's not that easy. For example, you can predict. It's not easy to predict uh, in heat. In heat, meaning when the cattle want to get having sex with, uh, and in order to reproduction, right? There's no such sensor for that. So we need to uh, do some kind of uh, machine learning there through this uh, through, through this data, right? Through this collected data. All right, so those examples uh, are actually uh, cloud-powered AI, right? So what's wrong with cloud-powered AI? Now, well, depends on the use cases. If you see the pros, you can always have more, you can always scale uh, your, your you know, AI engine, AI machine. And you, yeah, of course, you have unlimited computing power for inference, storage, and easier to maintain. Let's say you, you want to deploy your uh, latest model. You can deploy it to uh, one endpoint, right? And easier to secure. But the thing is that uh, it's high latency. As you can see from the Pierce demo uh, when, when doing uh, uh, you know, gender and emotion recognition, there's uh, some latency there, right? Maybe two or three seconds. And of course, you need to be online to be able to exchange the data to the cloud. And connectivity can be very uh, challenging. For example, in our case, uh, when the device deployed to the, uh, to the, uh, to the field, uh, sometimes it gets a loss of the connectivity, right? So, and also, uh, privacy issues. So all the data, your face, your sound, your voice will go to the cloud. So current uh, uh, trend, if you will, so we back to the simplified architecture. So current trend is that the intelligent engine is currently goes to the edge. Right. Okay. But you still have intelligence engine on the cloud, but you have miniaturized, compact, uh, more compact uh, intelligence uh, engine in, on, on the edge. So for example, let's say we have face recognition uh, application. So there's, there's still camera that capture the, your photo. And then, but the face detection and recognition are current, now running on, at the edge itself, right? at the device. So again, you have photo, and then you can you can recognize this is Andre, for example. And the only data now to be sent to the cloud is just maybe JSON or more, more compact data instead of the whole, the whole photo, right? So, so that's uh, how we do uh, AI ADH. So why? Uh, of course, pros is that it's all about performance, less latency. Uh, as no data that goes to cloud, uh, it can work all, offline, right? And of course, privacy is not it's not really uh, issues anymore because data can stay on the device. And it's all about power consumption. So, 70 to 80 percent of power consumption on on IoT device is actually uh, consumed by connectivity, right? Either Wi-Fi, LoRa, uh, NB IoT kind of things. So it if the data size is not that big, so you can, the time you use, uh, the time you spend in, uh, to use the uh, uh, connectivity will be, will be smaller, so the, uh, the power will be more efficient. And cons, of course, uh, um, machine learning model needs to be optimized, right? Uh, and of course, it's all about deployment and Updates is very challenging. 
So how we can achieve that? Uh, uh, we need hardware and software. Uh, we need um, optimize uh, microcontroller or microprocessor uh, in order to still to be able to run inference uh, AI inference. Uh, either you can use GP or APG or uh, application specific IC. Uh, you need some kind of development board in order to get started for development. Uh, uh, maybe you ha lately you, you heard of uh, Coral from Google. There's also Nvidia, Jetson Nano, uh, Intel coming with uh, neural comp compute stick. And you need software. So this one is very important because we need to convert the model that we uh, train uh, on the cloud or on, on, on PC. You need to convert to, to more optimized uh, uh, form. For example, TensorFlow tensor Lite. Uh, and of course, you need documentation, right? OK, so I want to switch gear to demo first. Then I ex explain what it is. Okay, I I will uh, show the. Uh, so this is the device that we will use right now. All right? Can you see it? Okay. <clears throat> now I will I will run a uh, Python script. Let me <clears throat> make sure. Okay. Oh, you cannot see it. Sorry. Okay, can you see it? Now, if I uh, goes to here, you can you can see that it's able to recognize this bottle, right? Uh, there's a lot of people there, so it gets confused there. Okay, maybe for here. Okay. You can recognize bottle, right? It's not many it can recognize because this is only 20 classes. Uh, can I see you, sir? Uh, this is person. Are you person? Yep. Person. Uh, Why not? Uh, okay. No, no, uh, not, not yet, of course, because I haven't. Uh, uh, okay. Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm still person. Still person. <laughs> so, uh, so the whole recognition is actually, uh, det sorry, detection is actually uh, running on this uh, small device, right? It's not Raspberry Pi. I will explain more about this. Okay. So what 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 really uh, does really happens there? Of course, it's easier to do object detection if you have uh, six thousand six k new mic pro, right? Just greater. <clears throat> greater, I see. It's easier, or even or still easier if you have, for example, SBC single board computers. You can use Raspberry Pi plus uh, NCS Intel NCS. You can use Google Coral. Uh, or NVIDIA just nano. But the thing is that it requires 5 to 10 watts, which is 2 amps, 2 amperes, right? So if you run with battery, it will last maybe one day, right? Less than one day. So we need something more. Uh, I will talk specifically about this uh, microcontroller. Disclaimer, I have no application with the company yet. Uh, Maybe someday, but uh, so what? What I'm talking about is something we call it K two K two ten K two ten. So it's it's actually based on RISC five dual core, and one thing to notice is, is that it has its own uh, CN, CNN accelerators. What we call it KPU KPU meaning uh, knowledge processing unit. And other stops, right? So, 
So this is dual core uh, processors. It has KPU, APU, audio processing unit, and it, it has uh, eight MB uh, static RAMs. And we can uh, playing around with uh, uh, I/O, programmable I/O. Uh, and we have dedicated line for digital video port, DPV, for camera and LCD. And AVFT, you, of course, if you're doing machine learning, you, you, you really need maybe AVFT, fast Fourier transform, uh, you know, uh, and something to deal with encryption. Right. But of course, we cannot use right away the uh, chip the IC, so we need micro, uh, sorry, uh, department board, something like this, this department board. Um, and we need software, of course. Uh, we have Max Duino, uh, Max Pine, and so on. I, I will explain more about this. And we need tools for development. I use Visual Studio Code and Platform IO. And we need some other tools, which is I will explain later. And we need a support, of course, a documentation, data sets, so on. So this, this is actually the board that I uh, just used. Uh, as you can see, it has camera, it has uh, microphone, uh, SD card, uh, battery, and so on. Uh, this is another version. And this is another version. So this one is, you can plug on top of uh, Raspberry Pi, so you can, uh, you know, uh, you can help Raspberry Pi to offload the uh, the AI processing to this board. Okay, so this board is only about uh, one tenth of previous board, right? And this one is in full full power, so if we put it on the, onto a sleep mo sleeping mode, it will be uh, one tenth. Okay. So the dimension we can we can code it with micro pattern. Yeah, we can. So uh, we have a micro pattern port for get a two to ten processor, which we call it Max Pi. Okay, so back to the previous demo, which is a object detection, right? So what, what, what we actually use is that we use YOLO. So the whole, you know, YOLO, right? Uh, which is, this one is actually YOLO V2. So you put YOLO on this small device, right? right. So uh, you, can, you use MaxPy for loading the models and uh, accessing the uh, the camera streams, and then uh, display the prediction and burning box. Okay. So let's do another another demo there. Um, okay, I, I will first uh, show you how we can install a micro python on this on this uh, device so i will uh, so i will change the uh, can you see it uh, i will change the firmware into the minimum uh, version because of uh, the next demo would be uh, the, the model size would be will be quite big so i will reduce the firmware size Oops. Okay. Sometimes the port uh, get change. Okay. What we currently do is that oh. Okay. Okay, I think I know. I, I should. Yeah. <clears throat> so what we can be doing is that we upload the MicroPython firmware so that we can 
use MicroPython to to do the demo, to code. Okay, now you can see it's still it's, it's running uh, MicroPy, right? All right, so. Of course, you know image classification. Uh, for image classification, we, we need to choose the architecture, right? So which one we choose? Which one do we choose? It's impossible to use PGG, for example, right? 500 max. So the closest uh, candidate is that we can use mobile net. But mobile net is still too big, right? 70 max. If you remember the static RAM that the device has is only uh, 8 max. So how can how can we do it? Okay, before I uh, I want to use uh, general uh, mobile net architecture in order to do image classification. Okay. Okay, uh, while I'm here, I can show you, this is the script, right? I will, I will explain later. And then in order to, in order to run the script into this uh, board, we can use some, uh, some uh, extension on Visual Studio Code, we call it uh, PyMaker, okay? We need to change the address. This is the serial port and everything. So now all I have to do is just doing run. Okay. Okay, back to this. So now I will try to uh, classify. As you can see, it's able to uh, to classify this as a notebook, right? This one is water bottle. And while I'm here, you can see that the frame per second is quite high, 26, which is quite good, right? Again, everything running on this small device. So that mobile net. But now, how we can use our own data set in order to do image classification? Now, for that, I, I want to tell a story about what we're currently doing. So, we currently, we currently uh, my company is doing uh, what we call it uh, trash can, smart trash can. Uh, it's, it's all about sorting which uh, plastic and non-plastic because we want to give the reward to the uh, to the people who throw the, the trash <coughs> and everything. Uh, and currently the, the project is including the whole thing, you know, design, hardware, mechanical, firmware, submission and everything. So this is the inside. You can see there's a compactor in order to compact the, the trash. And there's a magic box here. This is actually sorting compartment. So we need to be, to have some kind of you know uh, trash classification, right? So the way we do it is that uh, we need to be able to classify uh, you know classify the, the trash as a plastic, glass, and other. So we don't really care about others, but we only care about plastic or or or, or glass. So. The way we uh, train or, or, or prepare the model is that we train the mobile net uh, architecture. We use transfer learning using Keras, uh, which result in H5, right? And then we use TOCO, uh, TensorFlow Light Converter, in order to compress. So from seven. 17 max, we, can, we are able to compress about uh, uh, up to 8 max, right? 
And then we, we need to optimize the model in order to be able to run on, on K210. Uh, uh, so we use uh, tools, what we call it NNCast, right? Okay, so um, let's see how, how it goes. Um, over here, I uh, have, <coughs> let's say, the Jupyter Notebook about how we can train the, uh, okay, this is the, uh, this is the data set, okay, we have, you know, bottle, plastics, bottle, and other things, okay. Now you can see that we use mobile net, <clears throat> but we reduce the alpha of to 75 percent, and we are not including the top so that we can train the last layers, and we use image net for weights. Okay. Obviously, I won't train. It will be take take quite sometimes. Oh, okay. So what we we'll ask, what we add uh, as the last layer is that we we uh, we only sorry uh, we only add the uh, what we call it dense layer, which is the uh, num number number of class, which is only three three number of class, right? Glass, plastic, and other. Okay. And then we can just do the train. Okay. We will start training. Obviously, I will I will stop here because it would take quite some time. And <clears throat> after that, we can get the best models uh, because I use callbacks here in order to get the best models uh, based on the validation loss. And then from this best model, I can, uh, I can do convert. Okay. So what what's, it's actually doing right now is the converting the H5 to TF Live, right? <clears throat> and later converting TF Live to K model. Okay. So this is the uh, layers that get converted. Now after that we have this file, what we call it best model K model, right? And then we copy this file to the uh, to this board through uh, via uh, SD card, or you can burn it uh, into the flash. I already done that, so I, uh, I can show you that I already have dot that file. Okay, this is the file that I uploaded. Okay, and now we can uh, use this quite similar uh, code uh, as the previous mobile net classifier. So what we do is first is that we access the sensor, which is the camera. Okay, we define the labels. Uh, LCD on, is only display things, and this is the important step: is that we load the model, right? We load the model, and then after that, we do the port. Okay, got it. And after that, we can just run it. Okay. Okay. Sorry.
Now we'll try to classify this bottle, right? Okay. It's quite confused with, uh, between glass and plastic, right? But you get the idea. Right? Okay, so this will be plastic or, or glass. It's quite similar. But if an, another thing, for example, this one, it will be other. Right? So again, you, you can see that it can classify. And since we're talking about IoT, we can do some kind of uh, accessing GPI, GPIO in order to uh, you know, control some things. So, uh, for example, I can try to, I can try to light up some LED here. You can see LED there. So if we detect plastic, it will be turned green. And if it detects something else, it will turn red, for example. That's just demo. If you can turn on LED, you can turn, turn on everything. Yeah, you can control a relay, you can control everything. OK? So this, this is the, the, the code. All right. So what about non-image data? This demo uh, I, that I do is actually uh, uh, I speak, so you cannot hear the, the, the voice. Hey, Friday. So when I say Friday, it will detect Friday. When I say Jarvis, it will detect Jarvis. Right? So being Tony Stark a bit. Right? Andrew, we're going to have to stop. Here. OK, all right. So uh, as, a, as a closing, IoT is inevitable. So you need to embrace now, so you need to learn now. Uh, call to action, you, you can contact me at uh, Andre. Uh, this, the code will be published there uh, on my GitHub, and also the slide will be there. And thank you. It seems like it's not uh, support the full flag uh, principle line. Yes. So what they can't do with the Pimax uh, for the for the deep learning? All right. So uh, this is a good, very good question. Um, so first thing, if I go through this, so the first thing that they do is that they uh, quantize. I quantize. They do quantization here, right? From here to here. So float data. Float data would be converted to the uh, unsigned integer, right? and then uh, unused layers for training it would be it would be removed. And from this, it's actually quite already quite small. But then they need to uh, optimize the lay the network to K model, which which means that uh, there's some uh, for example there's a convolution 2D. Uh, the the microcontrollers cannot take, for example, less than four by four metrics, for example, right? So it will do optimization. All in all, basically, it's all about you know compress and reduce the size. So because of this one time, mm. uh, they can do like a deconvolution, right? Um, I don't think so. Yeah, currently not 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 possible. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So basically, all you, you need to retrain everything, right? So it's, you, you cannot just get uh, H5 or PB for s s somewhere else and then do the conversion. You, you need to do retraining, right? Okay, let's hear it again for Andrew. Okay.